Welcome friends, before I tell you the difference between the latches and flip-flops, please pause the video for a while and think yourself and if your answer is flip-flops are electronic circuits which are enabled with clocks and latches are the electronic circuits which don't have the clocks, then you are totally wrong. And if you mapped in your mind this circuit as latch and this circuit as flip-flop, then in this case also you people are totally wrong. This circuit is latch by this circuit is clocked enable latch and this is the circuit which follow the exact definition of flip-flop and this is called flip-flop or master slave flip-flops so flip-flops are the electronic circuit which are age sensitive or we can say they are the transition sensitive and latches are the electronic circuits which are level sensitive if you understand this basic difference you need not to go through this table so let's understand the level sensitive and a sensitive by this timing diagram this is your in given input data if your input data is changing is this moment so if you are using the latch, latch means it is the level sensitive on this level your latch will de detect the change in the input and it will be give the output as accordingly so here your input data is changing this is the output of latch why is the output of latch so the moment your input data is changing your output is also going to change but in the case of flip-flop your output data won't change with the input but it will wait for the transition of clock so here the input data is changing but output data of your flip-flop is constant this level sensitive nature of latch cause the glitch in the output circuit which is undesirable this circuit is latch it stores one bit of data all these circuits store one bit of data even though it requires less number of gates but we don't use it practically because on a simple chip there are so many flip-flops and nowadays processors are multi-programming multi-programming in the sense it is single times processors are doing multiple work so just assume if this circuit is, is enabled and another circuit you don't want to use you are getting output from this circuit since in a chip most of the circuits are connected via each other and just assume the output of this circuit connected to this input of this circuit so whenever the output of this circuit will change it will cause the change in input of this circuit so the output of second circuit will also change so this is undesirable we don't want to change up the output of this circuit because we have used it as a flip-flop and what we want is until and unless we don't change the input of this flip-flop there should not be any change in the output of this flip-flop in this case without changing the input of this input this first circuit causing the change in the output of this circuit so we want isolation of second circuits from the first circuit when the second circuit is not in used so first this latch circuit is not providing us the isolation so it is completely feasible to use this circuit in a chip so this drawback of the first circuit can be controlled by introducing the clock in the circuit and this circuit is called clock enable latch to understand this circuit let's look at the true table of this circuit here you will notice that whenever the clock is zero irrespective of change in input, the output is following the previous output this has printed wrong this bar should not be there but whenever the clock is changing whatever the data you are feeding at the input that is reflecting at the output so let's understand this by this example so on a chip there are uh, two parts of circuit so you are currently using this circuit so for this circuit you keep the clock enable means clock equal to one and for this circuit when you are not using keep the clock equal to zero so whenever you will change the input of this flip-flop the output will change here so we are feeding the output of this flip-flop to this one so this will also change the input of this flip-flop but clock of second flip-flop is zero so even though this circuit will cause the change in the input of second flip-flop but it won't reflect to the output of second flip-flop so in this way we are controlling this circuit by making use of clock but we are also not using this circuit practically why the problem in this circuit is that this circuit will remain in the same state and output will be constant as long as the clock is zero or disable but this circuit output will change as many as time the input will change or clock is enable so this is the causing problem to overcome this thing we are going for master slip flip-flop so let's understand the drawback of this circuit by the diagram you are having two flip-flops 
flip flop 1 and flip flop 2 on a chip and just assume for both of these flip flops clock is enabled and output of uh, this first flip flop you are feeding to the input of second flip -flop. so just assume that because of noise if output of uh, first flip flop change momentarily or if you get a glitch at the output of first flip flop so this output will feed back to the input to the second flip flop and since clock is enabled this because of glitch this output will be also effect so this is again this is un undesirable case so to overcome this we are going for master slip flip flop okay so let's let's understand the working of master slip flip flop by this ti timing diagram in master slip flip flop we are taking two clock enable latches and we are making sure that out of these two clock enable latches only one latch is activated a single time so while feeding the clock to the slip we are passing it by inverter to understand the master slip flip flop and its timing diagram keep two things in mind or you can tell you as a trick okay for master output for master output you have to see the transition in s and r means you have to see the transition in input when whenever the clock is high okay and whenever the clock is zero the output of master will be constant second thing for slave output you have to see the output of master whenever the clock is zero and the output of must slave will remain same for clock equal to one so let's understand the timing diagram first just uh, just take y as the output of master so i am assuming that you will know the truth table of sr flip flop first we will check the output of master whenever the clock is high so here s is one and r is zero means irrespective of the previous input uh, output it is going to be one okay so this is right again whenever the clock is one we will see the output of master so uh, here s equal to zero and r equal to one so irrespective of the previous output the new output of the master flip flop is going to be zero since r is high st in high state or you can say flip flop is in this reset state again here clocks become high and at this moment because of noise you can say flip flop is going for the high state output momentarily since this is clocked in a flip flop so this will be level sensitive so this output will be reflect here okay so at this moment s is high irrespective of the previous output the output of master is going to be one for this duration again s equal to zero r equal to zero so it is going to be in memory state so output of the master is going to follow the previous, previous output now see the output of slave we have to check the output of slave whenever the clock is zero at this moment s equal to one r equal to zero it means it is going to be one output of slave is going to be one this is irrespective of the previous output again here s equal to zero and r equal to zero it means flip flop is slave flip flop is in, is in memory state and this flip flop slave flip flop is going to follow to the previous output and previous output is one so for this duration it, it will be one again clock becomes high so in high state what will happen output will be same as the previous output okay? so output is same again clock equal to zero here you see r equal to one and s equal to zero so irrespective of the previous output the output of slave is going to be zero since the flip, slave flip flop comes under reset state again in this duration only the r changes from one to zero and s equal to zero so it comes into the memory state memory state means output of slave going to be the same as the previous out again for clock equal to one for clock, clock equal to one the output of slave will be remain constant or remain same as the previous output so in this duration it is going to be zero only so you can see that here because of glitches we are getting the wrong, wrong output at the output of master but this wrong output is not reflecting to the output of slave flip flop so that is why we want our flip flop to be to be a uh, trigger sensitive or transition sensitive sensitive that is why we are using master slave flip flop and this master this is triggering can be positive as trigger or negative as trigger so just tell me what is the triggering of this master slave flip flop this master slave flip flop is negative trigger why why because this slave slave is responding when the clock is zero so this is why this is the negative triggered flip flop i hope you have understand the difference between the latch and flip flop one more thing i want to 
to convey here that this circuit is flip flop and you can represent this circuit by a single block like this as a only change you have to bring that you have to do like this so if uh, this means this this flip flop is level sensitive and this bubble shows that it is negative as sensitive so whatever the application you study uh, of flip flop in the digital electronics like counter register frequency divider all those circuit uses master slave flip flop